All right, I'm going to come back on, uh, to, to you on democracy, but Amita, let's bring you in. You are negotiating with 20 countries under the, the G20, and you've dealt with both demo democratic countries as well as autocratic countries in this. In your opinion, what is the advantages India has as democracy when you compare it with the rest of them? What are the big things that you see? What are the beneficial things? And would you like to also join this debate about freedom of speech and where does this thing end or begin? So I've been uh, negotiating with about uh, 20 plus countries, G20 plus the invitee countries over the last one and a half years now, including uh, the Indonesian presidency. Uh, I think all these uh, countries view India as very lively, as a very vibrant democracy. Uh, for them, uh, the political narrative is important, and they view India uh, from the perspective of the fact that you've got a prime minister who's got democratically elected the second time and has a very high level of uh, acceptance by the public at 70% plus even now, after two and a half years. Uh, secondly, to my mind, democracy is also about the kind of developmental work you've done to transform the lives of citizens in terms of providing electricity, in terms of houses, in terms of uh, roads made, in terms of uh, implementing the aspirational district program in some of the most backward districts of India and change the lives of those citizens. Everything else, to my mind, is is secondary to that. You, within a democratic framework, if you are able to, uh, say, provide uh, 30 million houses, which is like providing a house to every single Australian, you've provided 110 million uh, water connections, which is like uh, providing a water connection to every single German, and you've provided almost 243 million toilets, which is like providing toilets to every single person in Brazil and made 55,000 kilometers of roads in a democratic setup through an electoral process. You've elected people and you've provided uh, 2.5 billion vaccinations all through democratic process by digitalizing your process. That's a great achievement and we should focus on those achievements. You know, I, I, we can actually go through this whole session talking on democracy, but I will circle back to that, this subject again. And let's deal with the other three Ds, because they are also very critical in, in what we're looking at in terms of India's growth. And let's uh, talk about, uh, you know, this is a much talked about subject, the demographic dividend. Uh, now, there is a huge eligible working population, and India is probably going to have the largest because China is declining, and 59% of our population is between the ages 20 to 60, which is the working population. Now, have we exploited, PTR, in your opinion, the advantage that is there, or is, will this, because we have not done the kind of things that we've done, really become a curse rather than a dividend? Yeah, I think there's a window of opportunity uh, where we will have this kind of uh, average age be in our favor. Places like Tamil Nadu, we're already past that. We're past the peak. Our birth rate is now only about 1.6 TFR. So we're already an aging population. Without migrant labor, we cannot function, and that's why we're very conducive and open to it. But as a country, and particularly, and there's a great disparity, right? If you take, like, the northern states, the TFR is still 3 plus, uh, in some cases, 3.5 plus. So there, unless you can create job opportunities fast enough, you're going to have a problem. That is very clear. If you look across the span of history, having a lot of unemployed youth is a precursor for social unrest. So I think, uh, at least as far as my state is concerned, uh, we still have a lot more to do, but we are not in a desperate situation where we have a lot of unemployed youth. The youth unemployment rates are probably, you know, in the 10, 12 percent. But if the statistics that I read are accurate around the country as high as 25, 30, higher than that, surely that becomes a problem. Uh, if not now, sooner rather than later, that becomes a problem. So I think job creation, for example, in our state, we are focusing a lot on skilling beyond gross education, which is the highest in the country. Enrollment in higher education is double the national average, right, at 52 percent. Yet we have a lot of people who are not capable of getting employed immediately upon graduation or in the right field and so forth. So we focused a lot since we came to power two years ago on upskilling and finding 
partnerships where we can pre-certify people in required skills, not just in India, but in places like Australia or Germany, so that we can have uh, a direct employment opportunities in places where there's a shortage of labor, and we can move our people into that high end of the uh, labor spectrum, you know, $40,000, $60,000 starting wages kind of jobs.